Hey, Right Riders, it's your old pal Keith Wheeler here. You know it, back with another video for you. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to find the words to write a children's picture book. Now, I'm gonna tell you that writing a children's picture book, a lot of people think is super easy because there's not a lot of words. You know, you, you only have a few words in it, but it's actually the opposite. Because there's so few words, you need to be so spot on with the words that you choose. And that really can make the difference between a children's picture book that sells really well and one that just kind of trickles along. So today I'm gonna to give you my five tips on how to write a good children's picture book. Number one, first you gotta write your story. Now I know that sounds easier said than done, but it, it doesn't have to be beautiful. It's your first draft. All you need to do is get the words out of your head and down on a piece of paper, either handwritten or electronic. It doesn't matter. Just getting them out of your head and written somewhere. It doesn't have to be complete sentences. It just needs to be a way for you to write down and just put visually what you have in your head to paper. Now, this may be the part that takes the longest amount of time because you, you, you want to try to, you know, your editing brain wants to kick in and you want to try to, to make it perfect. Don't. Done is better than perfect when it comes to this. What you need to do is just get those words down. Get those ideas on paper. Number two, based on the topic, you need to come up with the age range or grade of your target audience. If you don't know who your target audience is, if you don't know who you're writing this book for, who the end user is going to be, then it's going to be hard to write the perfect children's book because just a grade difference can make a huge difference in the type of words that you want to use that will one, engage your reader and two, that will challenge them to learn new words. So it's imperative that you figure out what your age range is or the grade level of the child that's gonna be using this book. So how do you find out what the age range is or, or what the grade level is? Well, the easiest way to do that is look at your competition. So go online, go on Amazon and other marketplaces and search up other books that are comparable to what yours are. I mean, don't worry about Dr. Seuss and you know books like that because those are those are more broad because it's nostalgia. It's not actually for that particular age group. So focus on books like uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears and, and books that you've read as a kid, as well as just books that you find just by searching the marketplace. And by looking at the theme, by looking at the, the topic of that book, is it something that you think would be around the age range of what you're looking for? Then you can go into, especially if you're on Amazon, you can go to the marketplace, check out the look inside feature, see if you can read a couple words from it, you know, the couple pages, and see if that's the kind of story that you're looking for as far as the the age range that it's targeting. If so, you can go down to the uh, a little bit further down in the product description, and it'll typically tell you what the age range is or the grade level, which leads me to step number three which is read other books for that age range or grade level. You wanna get an idea for the themes, the words that are used, and the number of words that are used per page and per book. Again, this will help guide you in, in what your target audience is used to. The important thing is that the ones that you're reading and the ones that you're using as a gauge, make sure that they have a decent BSR, bestseller rank, meaning 100,000 or less. And that tells you that these books are selling pretty regularly, which means that what the content is, is what your potential buyer is used to seeing. And so that way you know that you're on the right track. Okay, so as of now, you've done the hard stuff. You've written the first draft or rough draft or at least an outline, right? Gotten those words out of your head and down on paper. Then you've gone in and you've, you've figured out what the age range or grade level is for the book that you wanna write. Then you've gone in and you've done your due diligence and you've read other books that are targeted to that audience. So you can kind of get a feel for what kind of themes and, and what words and, and length of words that people are expecting in their book for that age range or grade level. Well, the next thing you want to do is you want to take it one step further. And this is something that I do that a lot of people don't do when they're writing picture books. And I think this is where they're really failing. And that is you want to go online. You can just Google this up do a little Google magic and look up, they're called sight words, S-I-G-H-T words. And you'll put sight words for whatever grade level or age range that you're targeting. Sight words are what they call it in English class or grammar class. These are the words that the kids in that grade level are supposed to know by sight, just by seeing them 
by the end of that year, by the end of that grade. And so this tells you what they're learning. These are the words that they're learning. These are the words that they're going to get familiar with. And if you can put as many of these sight words as possible in your story, because then this book becomes educational and the words that they'll get excited when they see the words that they're already getting familiar with in school. And now you're helping them learn these words in your book. That's a little tip that will make your book really stand out, not just to the child, but to the parent, because the parent's going to recognize these sight words and be like, oh, this book is teaching them what they're learning in school anyway. Now, one thing that I cannot stress enough, do not dumb down your book for the kids. Kids are, are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. It's okay. And I actually encourage you to put in maybe one or two words that are bigger than what that particular grade level or age level child is used to seeing. It's okay for them to learn an extra word or two. I wouldn't go more than two because that can become frustrating for the child if they have to keep, you know, figuring out these harder words. So, I mean, you're already putting in sight words, right? So you're already putting in words that they have to learn anyway with school and they have to know by sight. So just putting in one, maybe two words that are a little bit heavier, a little bit longer. So maybe words that, let's say your book is for, you know, grade two, then maybe look up some sight words for grade three and take maybe one or two of those words and put those in your book as well. Assuming that they fit. I mean, you don't want to just, you want to jot these down because you haven't written your, your final draft yet, right? So you want to write these down. You want to write down the sight words. You want to write down maybe these one or two extra sight words for like advanced level and see if there's a way that you can fit those into your story naturally, which leads us to number five, which is it's time for you to rewrite that first draft. Go back and read that first draft. I promise you it's probably hot garbage. Mine always are. And rewrite it using what you've learned. You know, what you now know what your age range is, what your grade level is that you're targeting. You know what sight words they're using in school. You know what sight words are, you know, a little bit more advanced because they're for the next level up. So you can use one or two of those. And using those words, obviously you don't have to use all of them. You don't want it to just look like a mashup of sight words. You know, you want it to be a good story. It's got to be a good story, number one. First and foremost, if it's not bringing that child back and having that child say, read it again, mommy, read it again, daddy, then it's not going to last long. And it's not going to be something that that is going to give you a great book review. And it's not something that, that they're going to come back to and, and buy other books in your line. So first and foremost, it's got to be a good story, right? But by adding in some of those sight words, by keeping in mind what you've read and you've written down, maybe, you know, the when you've read the other books that are comparable to yours and, and you see how many words are on a page, how many pages are in the book, that kind of stuff. You use all of that information that you've learned, all that data that you've taken in to write your second draft. Now, again, the second draft doesn't have to be perfect. You, you know, you're probably going to do a couple more lines of edits and maybe even have a children's picture book editor go through and edit your book. One thing I would say for your third draft is Looking at your second draft, this is kind of a bonus, okay? Looking at your second draft, go through it line by line and see if there's anything, like if you have two words together, is there a way you can combine that into one word? Because again, children's picture books don't have a lot of words in them, but you need to make sure that the words you do have have meaning and are powerful. So if there's an easier way to say it, a simpler, a more condensed way to say it, then you might want to do that. Okay, so I got one more tip for you, and uh, this is kind of a bonus bonus tip. If this is your first children's book, don't try to rhyme. I mean, if it comes natural, that's fine. But there's a reason why Dr. Seuss made up all those words, because it's hard to rhyme. It's hard to rhyme and keep a good rhythm, because you have to remember, just because when you're writing the book and you're reading it back, you have this rhythm in your head, that rhythm has to come natural to the person picking up your book. Because if they're reading your book for the first time, and they're obviously not in your head, so they don't, if they can't grasp what the rhythm is really quickly, the book is going to seem jarring and they're just going to put it down. So try to avoid writing in rhyme if you can, at least for your first book or two. Now, again, if you're, if you absolutely want your book to rhyme, that's fair. That's fine. It's completely up to you. It's your book. But I just suggest before you publish it to hand it off to somebody who's never read it before and see if they can get that same rhythm reading it themselves. Beta readers are great for things like that. Now, I'm not sure if you know it, but I actually have an entire playlist, an entire series 
on how to write a children's picture book from scratch. If you want to check it out, it's right here. And I've got so many positive comments from these videos. And you can even get your hands on the checklist that I use when I'm writing all my children's picture books. But if you've already seen that, or maybe you're just not ready for that playlist yet, well then YouTube says this video right here has got your name written all over it. I'll catch you in one of these videos and remember to write right.